Hey everybody, it's Lon Seib, and we've got a nice new Chromebook from HP to take a look at today. This is their HP Chromebook 13G1, more of a premium feel than we've seen on many of the other ones that we have looked at here on the channel, but I'm starting to see uh, more mid-range and more premium Chromebooks making their way onto the market. I think there's more of a consumer uh, desire for nicer hardware, so we're seeing that reflected by what manufacturers are making. And this one, they're actually also targeting at enterprise customers too, uh, so it's got a bit of an executive feel to it, and we're going to get into uh, its performance and what sets a mid-range Chromebook apart from some of the cheaper ones in a second. But I do want to mention in the interest of full disclosure that this is on loan from HP. So when we're done with this, we're sending it back to the mothership. However, all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review and nobody is reviewing this content before it is posted. So there are a bunch of different ways to configure this. This one is their mid-range model. It's running with a core M5 6Y57 processor at 1.1 gigahertz, 8 gigabytes of RAM, 32 gigabytes of internal storage on board, a 13.3 inch quad HD display running at 1300 by 1800, very high resolution, really sharp text and graphics on it. I was very impressed with this. The first thing I noticed when I uh, took it out and booted it up was how nice the display looked. Very bright, uh, really, really nice here. There's also a version available with a uh, full HD, which is a 1920 by 1080p display. Uh, that one will look nice also because even in this 13 inch form factor, uh, full HD does look very sharp as well. And if you want better battery life, uh, look to that full HD version because that will give you an extra two or three hours of overall battery life. This one only goes about uh, eight, to seven and a half to eight hours in my testing with this uh, particular display on. You can squeeze a little bit out if you reduce the display quality and uh, stick to some of the lower uh, end web tasks with it, but you'll definitely get better life out of the full HD display. Now there is a, a version of this that starts at 499 with a Pentium Braswell processor. That one has four gigabytes of RAM and 32 gigabytes of storage. There, there's a sweet spot though uh, at 599 and that is the Core M3 version. That one's got the Quad HD display. It has four gigabytes of RAM and 32 gigabytes of storage and the M3 processor while slower than what you're going to see on this M5 isn't all that much slower so that one might be uh, worth a look. It is completely fanless. It's got that core M processor again. Even the Pentium one is also fanless so it keeps quiet. Doesn't get too hot but you know on Chromebooks you're not doing a lot of uh, really demanding kinds of things. So I was watching some videos on a few streaming services and doing some uh, web documents and whatnot and it didn't get all that hot to me but I think if you had it down on some carpet or something or some other kind of uh, surface that absorbs heat, it might heat up a little bit more. And what these fanless computers do is because they can't turn on a fan to cool themselves off, uh, they slow themselves down. But I didn't notice any slowdown uh, as I was using it. All aluminum design here, very lightweight, 2.86 pounds or 1.9 kilograms, 1.29 kilograms, 13 millimeters in thickness or half an inch at its uh, thickest part here. So that is really nice on there. Feels really nice to hold too. Again, I really like this overall uh, design here. It really feels premium uh, and especially some something you would see uh, on an executive level desk or something like that. Uh, you do have two USB type C ports here on the side. There is no display output though, because you can use uh, these USB C outputs to get at it. And there is an HP dock available, a uh, single cable for charging display and extra port expansion that's available. These are running at the 3.1 Gen 1 speed. So right now you've got two uh, flavors of 3.1. You've got Gen 1, which is the USB 3 speed, and you have Gen 2, which is a uh, doubling of that speed. Uh, this one has the first generation speed on there, but it's a Chromebook, so you probably don't need more than that. There's a standard USB 3 port here. There's a headphone microphone jack over there. And on the other side, uh, you just have an SD card slot, which you can use to augment some of its storage. The card though, as you can see here, does stick out a little bit. And you wanna be careful because it's easy to pop the card out. It doesn't fly out at you, which is good. Um, but because it sticks out a little bit, if you uh, happen to brush uh, into something, it might uh, pop out there. So definitely be careful with that. But the card typically stays put, but it is easy to inadvertently uh, knock it out. Uh, the hinge is really nice on here too. It's a really shiny executive level kind of hinge. It doesn't go back all the way as some of the education Chromebooks do. So be careful around kids, but it does feel very strong to me. It doesn't um, bump around too much either. So it feels really good to me there. Uh, the keyboard and trackpad are really nice on this. The Chrome keyboards tend to be all the same size keys, but they all feel very different from each other from device to device. Uh, this one has really nice deep travel to the keys, uh, quite nice to type on. The trackpad also surprised me too because often I see trackpads that are passable on Chromebooks but not great. Uh, this one is very sensitive, a uh, nice click pad function to it, and it's also very good at multi-finger gestures on there too. Uh, so overall, a very, very nice package here. And now what we're going to do is get into the performance and see how well it does doing what Chromebooks do. 
All right, so let's take a look at the Chrome browser. And right now, that is, for the most part, what Chromebooks do. But there will soon be some Android app integration using the Google Play Store. I covered that in another video a few weeks ago. You can find that link down below in the video description if you're curious as to how uh, Android is going to interact with Chrome OS. But right now, uh, Chrome OS still is mostly a web browser. What we'll do first is uh, maybe just visit the New York Times, get a feel for how well it can browse the web. Uh, this does have wireless AC built in, so you've got the really fast Wi-Fi, uh, really good viewing angles on on this display also it is an IPS display so that will uh, also do quite nicely for you as you can see so you can get a lot of nice off-center viewing on it uh, without any uh, image degradation or at least any significant image degradation and again because we've got that quad HD display here really sharp text and graphics we're quite pleased with uh, how all of that works and on the octane benchmark score we get a really great score of 26,472 on this device with the M5 processor that's competitive with a i5 chip from a year or two ago so the prior generation i5 chip uh, on a Chromebook actually performs about where this one does, but this one has no fan, and that i5 processor does require having a fan built in. Uh, also check out, though, the Dell XPS 12 score, because that one's running in Windows. So there is a slight performance advantage uh, running with Chrome OS with that same processor, uh, because Chrome OS is a little bit more optimized for the types of things that uh, you do on the web. So I'm going to take a look at my YouTube channel real quick, and we'll get a feel for how it does with web video. I did watch some Netflix and some uh, Amazon stuff as I was testing it. That seemed to work pretty well. And you can see here, we get through the, uh, the ad on the uh, thing here. I should mention that the um, speakers are pretty loud. They're actually better suited for uh, teleconferences and Google Hangouts and those sorts of things versus music and movie watching. But they are uh, loud, just a little bit on the tinny side. Uh, but really good HD uh, video quality out of this when you're watching 1080p footage. Now, you will struggle a bit, though, with 4K video and other high-end video formats, at least those streamed over the web, especially from YouTube. So let me go back over to our web browser here. I'm going to pull up a 4K uh, video file that is on my uh, YouTube channel. And you can see already that it's very jaggedy. It's not being able to keep up very well with the frame rate. And if I go into the uh, stats for nerds here, you can get a feel for it. It might be hard to see on camera, but we're uh, dropping just about every other frame of this video. So it really isn't able to play back 4K video, at least through YouTube, very well, uh, which is unfortunate because this does support 4K displays. And the hardware is actually capable of playing this back. I bring this up all the time on my Chrome book reviews because this is a software thing and not a hardware thing. And to prove it, I'm going to go over to my memory card here. I did stick in a SD card uh, with some footage from my drone. This is a 4K video file that is playing back rather smoothly from uh, my uh, SD card here off of my uh, drone that I shot the other day. So this thing can play back the video at 4K resolution. It's just a matter of uh, getting uh, YouTube to align with uh, Google Chrome a little bit better. And I think there's going to be other services too, depending on what uh, video format that they're using that may or may not take advantage of the hardware acceleration that makes that smooth 4K playback possible. So that is uh, the only gotcha here. It's not the fault of this computer because the computer is capable of playing it back. It's really more of uh, getting the uh, proper alignment between what's available on the web and what's optimized for the processor. There are plugins and other things that you can install, but I always look for the consumer experience. And uh, there are ways to mitigate what you just saw with YouTube, but uh, by and large, it'd be nice to see the Chrome browser as it runs in Chrome OS uh, perform as well uh, online as it does locally. So that is the HP Chromebook 13 G1. And this is a really nice Chromebook. It's actually nice to see a mid-range developing in this market because we've often had the super high-end Chromebooks that didn't make a lot of sense for a lot of folks that were expensive. Uh, and then we had the multitude of $200 Chromebooks that are very plasticky and uh, you know, more suited for education than they might be for someone looking for a nice computer or uh, someone looking for an enterprise device. This one really fits nicely in the middle of the marketplace. Now, I do recommend that uh, you take a look at the $500 $99 Core M3 version. You'll save about $200 over the M5 version, uh, and I think you'll get by just fine with that processor with 4 gigs of RAM and that 32 gigabytes of storage. I think it has the same display at that price point also, so really good value, I think, at $599. Uh, this one's nice. It performs quite nicely at $819. I think the $1,100 version with the Core M7 is probably overkill, but if you really want the best of the best, uh, that's available too. I think we're also going to see a lot more Chromebooks like this one coming out over the next couple of months, so I'm very eager to keep uh, testing all of these, but this one really is nice. And I think if you're looking for a nice Chromebook, uh, this one is certainly worth taking a look at. This is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more.
And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv s.